show the no uh, yeah Ted. show the north south line don't be afraid you can mark the screen I'm trying to all right you, it's hard to see but it's a it's a blue line on the left hand side you circled the majority of that line right right all right and I think if you tap the left hand the left you can clear the screen tap the left of the screen is it left or right? We tap to clear it. Oh, she can clear it. Okay. She'll clear it. Okay. And for the jury, would you circle or mark um, the east and west line? And that's just one little part of it, right? Yes. I, it marked black before, so I marked so I can see it. And you talked about, so we've got this seemingly odd photo. Most people are used to a photo where they take with their phone that captures the whole screen. But we got this thing on top of some kind of grid. What's, what's the black stuff versus the image stuff? Uh, the image is all the photos the drone took, put together. The black area is photo, I mean it's just drone didn't take photos of that area. So all you see together is all the photos the drone took, just put into one big piece. Okay, and then clear that screen if you don't mind. Thank you, ma'am. And then mark the, the, the line that shows the distance between the house and the location of the body, the victim's body. See, that's a much better circle. There Sorry. All right, so that is the line, the green line is from the house to the, 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 where the victim's body is, was found. Yes. I'm going to show opposing counsel exhibit 37, which is three photographs. I'm going to go show you, we're going to mark these as 37A, A is an alpha, is the first photo. We've got a, here's to be an aerial photo, right? Yes. What am I looking at, do you recall? I think this was behind the uh, residence. The, the what? The residence, the home. <coughs> what am I looking at though specifically, do you recall? <coughs> Would that be the pergola? The it looks like a picnic area. And do you see at the top there, do you see a fountain? Yes. And you see some cones to the left of that fountain? Correct. All right, and that middle structure, what we call a pergola, you see that picnic area? Yes. All right. I'm going to show you what's marked as State Exhibit 37B as in boy. You see that photo? Yes. An aerial photo also, right? Correct. And we see that same fountain? Yes. Same cones? Yes. And the same pergola, right? Correct. Just a different aerial photo, right? Yes. <coughs> and finally, I'm going to show you what's been marked as state exhibit 37C, as in Charlie. See that photo? Yes. Also an aerial photo? Correct. And what do we see in the, do you see that circle of cones? Yes. What is that, do you recall? Uh, that's where I was told the uh, victim was found. The, right where the cones are at, right? Correct. In yeah. between the cones. Go to 
to the theory six B, we see the end over there. Can you circle the end of that green line? These are the same things, right? Yes. Right. They're moved to publish the drone footage, but I think it's ready to tee it up. I think it's the drone footage image is from from the thirty six A. Who's been admitted? Oh, uh, no objection if that's what that evidence is. Very well. And as she's pulling that up, officer, do you remember the address, the location of where the drone footage was conducted? It was 100 East Willow Cross Circle in uh, King Springs. Here in Santa Cruz County, right? Correct. Here in Santa Cruz County. And you remember the date you conducted the drone footage? Uh, the date I went is February 1st at approximately 10 a.m. ish. I'm assuming February 1st, 2023. I'm sorry, yes. All right, so last year, February 1st. Correct. One more question, John. Thank you, Your Honor.
May I approach the witness, please? Just looking at this yourself, could you look through these uh, different photos that's now been marked Defense ZZ and tell me if you could identify all these photos that are in that exhibit? Or just for the record, council has not seen the exhibits. I'm trying to prove them up and I was going to tender it to you. Yeah. I just don't know how to write down nothing. They'll see that. They'll see them before they're up. Uh, yes. Sure. Yes. We'll work forward there in a minute. If Thank they're, you. If they're in. Can you identify all these exhibits, all these photos within the exhibit? The last two are not my photos. Okay, can you identify it? Do you know what it is? Uh, it looks like a map, or a picture, Google Maps maybe, I don't know, of the area. Okay, does it, of the area of this scene that you used your drone? Uh, yes, I can see the house right here. So does this accurately depict the same view that your drone would be able to take if it was that high up? Yes. Okay. And both of the photos, because you mentioned the last two. Mm, the last photo, I don't know what that is. Okay. Let me pull that one off. So did you take any aerial uh, photos with your drone of the barn? No. Okay. I'm taking the last photo off this exhibit, and but otherwise everything here accurately depicts the scene? Yes. And I will tender it to the state since our equipment isn't working yet. No objection. ZZ is admitted. Thank you, Judge. Permission to right. Now, some of these photos, and we're going to publish them to the jurors in the court. Some of these we've seen, but a lot of these we haven't. Okay, so let's go back over this. I'm pointing to a building. Is that reflecting the house? Yes. And there is a little box area right here that I'm pointing with my uh, my pointer, which is my pen. Is that the pergola or the patio covering? Yes. Okay. And then you, there is a line here that somehow got on this map through your program that you used. And is that taking you in the direction of where the deceased was found? 
Yes. Okay. Now, is there a reason why you only do it over, like flying over the area versus are you capable of doing something lower and showing the terrain? Yes, I'm capable. Okay, did you do any mm -hmm. such flyover? Uh, no, we're not. Okay. There's a lot of things in this terrain that's between these two locations, the patio and the uh, de deceased. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Do you know how far out that is between the patio or the house to where the deceased was located? It's about 350. That's, that's the uh, measurement shown in the picture. 350 what? Feet. Okay, do you know how many yards that would be? Mm, no. All right, so 350 feet out, I had to do, you know, have my staff help me here uh, to make sure um, it's been measured mostly in yards, so I think it's pretty accurate. Um, and there's a lot of things in between, is that correct? Yes. Well, let me show you what has already been entered into evidence. Um, which is KK's, Defense KK, and I'm going to put this photo up for you to see, upside down, let me remember to do it the other way. <clears throat> Does this look familiar to you? It looks like the uh, bottom view of pictures from the drone. Okay. Is this, to your knowledge, heading in the direction where the deceased was supposedly found? <coughs> I couldn't tell because I wasn't there or looking from that picture. So you don't, you never placed yourself on this patio and in the direction of where people told you there was a, a body found? Correct, I did not. Okay. And you would agree that this appears to be a patio, brick patio starting there, maybe the corner of it right there. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. And you do see the pergola though, right? Correct. And there's no house in front of us, so would you would be fair to say that the house is probably behind this photo? Yes. Whoever took the photo? Okay. And there's a lot of things in here, and I want to keep reflecting back on this as we progress in your photos that I have uh, put into my exhibit and I'm going to move to the next photo Okay, the next photo in Z's Defense ZZ. You familiar with this location? Yes. Okay, are we, um, how many feet up do you think you might be in this photo? Approximately 65 feet. Okay, is this looking down above the pergola? Yes, it's looking down. And now we can see the full patio, can't we? Yes. And then the house is reflected to the right of our screen, correct? Correct. And the patio seems to be some sort of brick or, t or t uh, tile type brick laid down to create a patio. Is that true? Yes. Now, you have a line and it's a yellow arrow that's pointed to something. What is that supposed to be? Uh, cones. Okay, and what's the cones reflecting? Uh, from when I was told us where the uh, suspect in this case shot. Okay, so what measurements were you given to place that? Uh, no measurements. I was just told from the cones to the area where do a circle in the brush. So this is an estimate? Yes. And who told you that would be the location? The uh, detective on scene when I arrived. 
So he just said, here, put it right here, and you, where the I put the cones? Or did you put the cones there? The cones were already set up there. So you have no idea how those cones got there, right? Correct. And let's work backwards. Let's move, move forward and we'll come back to this. See this photo that's in the same exhibit? Yes. And what are we looking at? Uh, top view of. Looks like the end of the patio. So have we progressed a little further out from the house? Yes. Is there still a line being reflected? What appears to be yellow? Yes. And what is that line? Reflecting? That is the line that measure from the cones to where the uh, I was advised the suspect, the victim was located. And again, you not only don't know how the cones were placed there, where the uh, supposedly the person, my client, was standing, but you don't know for sure how they got an exact location of the body. Is that correct? Correct. You saw no measurements. No, I did not. No points that could say three feet from this tree or any other data points that would help with the exact location. All that I had was the cones and the uh, area of the circle and the brush. So, as far as you know, this is an estimate? Correct. Okay. And you have no knowledge how they had information about that, correct? Correct. Now, you would su suspect that they may have seen a deceased person out there. Would that be fair to guess? Yes. But you have no information why they place the person that supposedly followed these lines, the shooter, which they're trying to say is my client. You have no idea how they got that on there, do you? Correct. So you're just being doing what you're being told to do, correct? Yes. We're going to move to the next photo in the same exhibit. What are we looking at here? Still another view uh, of the area. Moving closer to the end of the uh, drone pictures. Did you have to walk around when you flew your drone? I stand by the area where the uh, victim was located and I just looked out for uh, anything higher that my drone could hit. Okay, so you guided it from the location of the alleged location of the deceased, correct? Yes. And what is all this wavy things in the photos? Uh, it looks like brush. So this is, at this time, and this is January 30th, uh, a year ago, correct? That was February. You did it in February? Yes, February 1st. And the incident date, did you know, was January 30th? No, I did not. Okay. But you were there in what, what day on February? Uh, the 1st. Okay. Shortly after. And even though it's wintertime, this is what we can see from above what the terrain would look like, right? Yes. Is there a reason why you could put your drone down lower to reflect what was in the way between the two points, data points that are being reflected by your line? There was a lot of uh, vegetation that could impact what my drone could hit. So that would be potentially dangerous for the life of your drone, correct? Correct. Okay. In other words, the drone could have been damaged if it ran into some of these 
uh, vegetation, mesquite trees or whatever was out there, cactus, whatever might be out there. Yes. And it was heavily vegetated, correct? As you can see in the picture. Right. Had we seen it um, where it was lower, we would know that it's heavily vegetated. So um, we'll come back to that too. <clears throat> The next photo in this group that we've already admitted. Get it upside down again. Can you identify this photo? Yes. What is this? It's from the same area of pictures of the drone, just getting closer to the end. And that would be closer to where the deceased was approximated to be located, correct? Correct. And these things that are a little bit darker, would that be more like trees? Or do you have any idea why it looks different than the lighter gray um, stuff on the ground? That probably be shadows. Okay, thank you. show you the next photo in my exhibit. Can you identify this? Yes, it's a photograph getting closer to where the uh, victim was. Okay. Okay. We can barely see it, but there is still your yellow line is in there, correct? Yes. Okay. And that's still hitting between the two points that you were told to put a line between, correct? Correct. And the next photo in this exhibit, what are we looking at here? That's the location where the uh, victim was located in this case. Or, or estimated to be estimated. located, right? Because you never saw no measurements, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, that's reflected with some cones on the ground? <coughs> yes. And. I'm going to point to a couple of what I see are cones. Am I pointing to a cone? Yes. And it seems to be a pretty good sized circle or area, correct? Correct. So once again, seems to be reflecting an approximate location because it's not a spot, correct? Yes. And I notice then if we follow the yellow line backwards to the left from the cones, it would be a continuation that would eventually get us back towards the house, correct? Yes. And approximately to the cones that the, that the detective or someone from his staff has set up, correct? Yes. Okay. And you see there's quite a bit of trees there blocking in between uh, where the deceased circle is. Um, heading down or up to the left in the line that is being reflected towards the house, correct? Yes, there was vegetation. Council, this would be a good time for us to take our mid morning recess. Ladies and gentlemen, we we'll stand at recess for 30 minutes. You rise, get forward. <laughs>
Defense Exhibit ZZ and another photo in that grouping. <clears throat> this white building is obviously reflecting the house. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. And this whole scene is um, <clears throat> a photo higher up than maybe your drone is capable of going, but it does reflect the terrain in the area, correct? Yes. Okay. Now houses are usually fixated and can't be moved, but there is a little pin dropped approximately in the direction of where the deceased was located. Um, so there's a good distance, and you omitted the amount of feet that this uh, distance is between that building and the location of the deceased, correct? Yes. Now, you said earlier that you were standing out here where the cones were set up to reflect the deceased body, correct? Yes. Okay. And so you didn't pay a lot of attention in the direction towards the house other than the utilization of your drone? Correct. Okay. And I, I, I've never seen really a drone close-up. We all see them on TV and whatever. Do you have some kind of camera in your hand that you could see the view of what your drone is seeing? Yes. Okay. And so, because when you're out here at this location where the deceased was, it's practically almost next to impossible to see the actual location of the house from the ground. Would you agree? With all the terrain in the way and all the trees and shrubs and... It's visible. You can see it? The house, yes. Okay. <clears throat> and, but you definitely, when you go above it, you can see it. Yes. Would you admit it's very difficult to see the building itself, though? Not difficult, no. No? Okay. And <clears throat> let me show you back to... Defendants KK. Now, this is the patio view, and this is looking in the direction where you drew a line from the patio outward. Does that look familiar? Yes, I see that picture. Okay. And you can see you have a pergola, you have some kind of table or something sitting underneath the pergola, correct? Yes. You see there, and this is the very far corner. This is not where the um, cones are set up. The cones are more to the left and back. Would you agree from this photo? Possibly, yes. Okay, and I could show you back to that photo in a minute. And you see all the things that are in this direction, immediately we have a tree to the right, correct? Yes. We have a smoker, um, uh, which I'm going to point to there, correct? Yes. Now, if you're standing to the left a little bit of this, and I'll go back to one of your photos to reflect what 
your hypothetical was? And I'm going to go back to the exhibit ZZ and show you the side, well, the, uh, where the arrow finally ended up at. And I'm going to publish this for you. You see all the obstacles? based on your line that are in the way uh, of this hypothetical location where uh, I believe you're putting cones as possible shooting position. Um, there's a lot of things there, including the pergola, the table, we go further out, the smoker, a lot of things are in the way, would you agree? From this top view, all I see is the top, I don't know, the height of the height right. of the bottom. But you can see it, you can see that it cuts through the pergola because the pergola actually extends out with, like right here, I'm going to point up to the screen, these, these are beams that are extending past the post there. And so that is also, and you can see it right here, those, those planks of wood come out past the post that's crossing it. And it could very well be um, something that would be in the way of the location of your, of your drawing. Would you agree? <coughs> yes. Okay. And then there's the actual posts that hold up this pergola, right? We, we know it to be at least four posts on the corners of this rectangle, correct? Yes. Okay, and so reflecting, I'm pointing to a couple locations to show that something has to hold this pergola up, correct? Yes. Okay, and then, um, so you never stood here to know that you would be shooting through your property. It would be a little bit of an obstacle to shoot from this location where the arrow ended up to get it in that direction where the um, the deceased body was located. So you didn't know that, did you? Correct. Here's another photo. Standing closer to the home, looking out in that direction. So again, if you're a little bit to the left on the patio, and then you're trying to shoot through all this to someone that may be out there. Um, you better be a, I don't know, I mean, why would anyone want to shoot through their property and do damage? Do you have any ideas? No. No. Um, and again, it was Detective Imes that told you to put those arrows there. Is that correct? No. Here's a close-up. I guess, of one of the obstacles in the same exhibit. Did you ever notice this obstacle? Only from the air. Okay, but you do see the post holding the pergola up, right? Yes. Okay, and you do see trees all around it, correct? Correct. draw the line between the two sets of cones. <coughs> Detective Bunting. And you had no idea why he wanted to do that, did you? He just wanted a measurement from the cones to where the uh, victim was located. How far is the measurement? It's about 350 feet. Feet or yards? Feet. Feet? Thank you. Okay. And again, another um, view, maybe past the pergola, looking out to the terrain. Does that look like the kind of terrain you were standing in? 
Uh, he wasn't standing in there at the house. No, but outwards, going out there, you were. Yes. And this type of terrain was all around you, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Another photo in the same set of evidence. <coughs> This is zoomed in. Again, how thick the thicket was during that time, correct? I don't know the uh, date of this picture, so I don't know. This is a crime scene photo, and so it would be very close to January 30th of last year when this happened. Um, and we can see there's lack of leaves and stuff on the trees, and yet it's still very thick out there. Isn't it? Yes. Just a moment, Your Honor. <clears throat> you know those, uh, we had testimony earlier, it was uh, a, a Leica testimony, laser scan, a map raw data was created. Is there anything about that that you utilized? No. Right. Have you ever sent your drone photos to someone that does do photogrammetry and actually make actual measurements and precision through their uh, photos? Have you ever you done something like that before? No. Are you aware that there is such thing out there? Uh, no, it wasn't, no. Pass the witness. Be direct examination. <coughs> you like to take it? Let me just start off with the last question asked of you about, do you know if your data was sent to anyone outside of DPS for review, like an, another expert, were you aware of any of that? No, not that I know of. <clears throat> Once you give it to the SO, you, you don't have control of what we do with it, right? Correct. <clears throat> this is in no particular order, but I just want to make sure I have proper reference here. <clears throat> Exhibit ZZ as in zebra. Just so we know, just for the record, too, I'm going to show you ZZ. We're going to label this one A as in alpha. You recognize that photo? Yes. <coughs> and once again, that's a photo like the one you testified, I think, exhibit earlier, where it's the drone footage, all the capturing of data overlaid on the that's why there's whiteness around it, right? Correct. <clears throat> we'll call that the club photo. I want to show you ZZ 
He is in boy. Second photo. And that's a photo where you show the arrow associated to cones. You see that? Yes. And once again, just so we know, you didn't set the cones up, right? Correct, I did not. Cones are set there prior. Yes. And you were instructed to take your measurement from the cones. Yes. I'm going to show you defense ZZ. C is in Charlie, the third photo. That's just another photo from above, getting further and further out, right? Correct. And these are your photos, right? Yes. I'm going to show you ZZ. We're going to do D as in David. That's the fourth photo. And you see on this, no, it's upside down. Let me just make sure it's correct. You see that photo? You see the, you see that photo, right? Yes, I do. On that photo, we've got some, um, let me ask you, what are the, the dark items? Let me put my pin to it. What are these dark items here? Those are big brush or shadows from the brush. It's like trees and, and tall stuff, right? Yes. And this gray stuff all around, what would that be? It's the uh, dried out vegetation, smaller vegetation. That'd be the dry grass? Yes. And how tall is that dry grass so we can have a perspective? Uh, I don't know, I would say no more than a foot. Maybe two feet? But nothing up here, right? Correct. That, um, for demonstration, I'm pointing to my chest. Nothing that high, right? Correct. All right. <clears throat> I'll show you ZZ, the fifth picture, we're going to label it E as in echo. And you see there's actual number on there. Is that 300, roughly 350 foot measurement? Correct. And we're all familiar with mostly football, I and mean, so 350 divided by 3 is yards, right? Is a yard. Yes. I mean, 3 feet is a yard, right? Correct. So 350 divided by 3 would give us the yards, right? Yes. ZZF as in Frank, that's another photo. We're still going out to where the victim's body was found, right? Correct. And ZZG as in giraffe, we see the circle cones, right? Yes. The circle, and that's where the arrow ends. Correct. Do you have any information at all about the victim's body, where it came from, where the people were moving from, or whatever? Do you have any independent information about the victim's body, when it was shot, how it was shot, anything like that? No. You were just told that is where you want to do the measurement from, right? Correct. And finally, ZZ, H as in house, the, the last picture. This is the, like a Google map of it, right? Looks like what it is. And this is one of your photos, right? No. No, not one of your photos, right, but it's admitted. Up on top, top you see the top right hand corner, we have a legend? Yes. And what are those numbers? Can you guess what those numbers are? Coordinates. And what's a, another, verb, another term for coordinates? Uh, GPS. GPS, okay. And can you read those out for me, what the coordinates are? Uh, 31.353043-110.802392. Would that be a minus, not a dash? Would you know? Uh, Correct, that's a minus. Okay, and then along the, along the map, you have a yellow pin why don't you, you, you can draw on that. Why don't you draw for me instead of me doing that. Draw me where the yellow pin is at. Okay, and I erased it for me. Erase that, left, left, bottom, left bottom screen. All right, and is that the coordinates there? Yes. Okay, so the coordinates are associated with the yellow pin. Yes. And the yellow pin is where the thickness body was found. Uh, I'm assuming yes. I'm 
I'm going to show you Defense Exhibit KK. We've got two photos here. One, I believe, is a defense photo. Let okay, me just mark these properly. Let me go through them properly here. KK, we're going to do the first one. A is an alpha. 101 of KK. Remember testifying about that photograph? <coughs> that I've seen it? Let, I'm just two seconds ago, you testified. Yes. All right. Do you know what direction that is? No. No. Okay. I'm going to show you the next photo. KKE as an elephant. This is further down the. This is almost the same photo as the first one, as A as an alpha. Do you know what direction that photo is from? No. No. The last picture in this assortment is KKF as in Frank. That's a different photo, right? Yes. Do you know what direction that photo has been taken? No. No. Now I'm going to go back to KK, B as in boy, C as in Charlie, D as in dad. So we've got seemingly two different photos here. I'm going to show you KK, B as in boy. That's a photo looking at the direction of where your arrow was matching cone to cone, right? It appears, yes. All right. Do you know if this is a defense photo or a government photo? Are you aware? No. Are you aware of the height taken from this photo? No. So we don't know the, the height of the photographer of this photo, do we? <coughs> I don't. I'm going to show you government exhibit. Cake, I mean... Defense exhibit KKD as in dog. See that photo? Yes. This is actually a government photo. And you see the direction, the same photo type, same kind of viewing on this photo, right? Yes. Are you aware of the height of the photographer on this photo? No. No. But let me take a look. Do you see the if you if you if you can't scan all the way out in the horizon, you see from the top of that pit, right? You see that pit? Scan all the way out to the horizon. You see where that landscape ends up there? Yes. Is that the, that's the ground, right? That, where the light space is, that's the top of the, 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 the there's a slight elevation here, right? Correct. And that's the top, right? Yes. And as we look at this photo, from patio cone to where the victim cone is at, as you look from this angle, is there anything obstructing your view to where the victim's body is found? No. I'm going to ask you too, also, your drone is one of those expensive big ones, I'm sure, right? It's uh, an Alto. Well, I don't know what that is. What is that? <laughs> it's, um, it's a brand, it's Alto. It's A-U-T-E-L. Uh, it's, I think, I believe it's worth about $3,500. $3,500. Is it like a four-wing propeller thing? Yes. Right. Expensive, a lot of training on that? Yes. And how, can you like do like a physical measurement with your hands, like give a, a guesstimate? How big is it? Yeah, how big is that? Um, I'll say maybe right around this big. It's like a, a big 15 screen laptop kind of thing? Yes, almost like the screen that I have right here. Computer monitor? Yes. Okay. So if you, if you fly that terrain, it's going to get snagged on some stuff, right? Yes. Okay. Obviously, I'm just going to ask you probably one of the most obvious questions, but that drone, the size of your screen, it's much bigger than a bullet, right? Yes. Right?
<coughs> so the questions I had here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, hold on a second. I forgot. Um, any questions for this witness from members of the jury? All right. Here's no. I think so. It's taken. It's taken. Call us next witness. He's going to call Officer Felix. <coughs> oh, here's your Good afternoon, officer. Can you state your name and spell your name for court reporter and for the jury? Yes, sir. Uh, Pedro Felix. Oh, I actually spell it too. Okay, sorry. Yeah. P E D R O F E L I X. Can you briefly introduce yourself to the jury for us? Yes, good morning. I am uh, Corporal Felix of the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office. I'm currently uh, assigned to the Patrol Division. been with Santa Cruz Sheriff's Department? Total for <coughs> well over 15, 16 years. You became involved in this case at some point, right? Correct. Who, who notified you and told you you need to work <coughs> some part of this case? Who, who, in, who, who uh, gave you instruction? Uh, Sergeant Parodius. What was your what was your main job in this case? My main job was to I relieve Sergeant Rodriguez and just uh, safe keep the body. Okay, so you're familiar where the the victim's body was located? Correct. And you relieved Sergeant Rodriguez. That was a, a night shift duty, right? It was a nine seven twenty four p.m. p.m. until when? I left. At one forty-three in the morning. And why'd you leave? Uh, that's when everything was collected, and I left after the body and the lighting equipment was picked up, and I was told to leave. So there's lighting equipment there. Yes. And then who picked up the body? Do you recall? Myself and evidence custodian Luis Gonzalez. I mean, where was the body going? Uh, to the. Luis Mar uh, sorry, Martinez Green Home. You also conducted, or you also um, did some GPS coordinates. Correct. And so, do you recall what the GPS, you did GPS coordinates for what? For the actual body. And do you recall what those coordinates were? Not off memory. Your Honor, permission to approach a witness? It just shows you what's been marked as Government Exhibit 1.2. That's your report, is it right? Is that correct? I want you to just review that real quick, look up when you're done. You ready? Did, did that report refresh your recollection? Yes. What were the coordinates? Uh, it's going to be 31.35304 by negative 110.0239. And you also will come to get that report. I just do counsel and judge. Mm -hmm. 
You also included those coordinates into a Google map, right? No, I didn't. You didn't do a Google map? No, that was not. I'm going to show you what's more just the exhibit 73. A is an alpha. You don't recall? Is that, is that on your screen? No. Oh, I'm sorry. You got your screen in two seconds. Do you recall that? That photo? Yes. You reviewed that photo, right? Yes. And that photo captures the GPS coordinates you, you measured on the day of? Yes. Is that, that red dot, is that reflective of the GPS coordinate where the victim's body was found? Yes. I'm going to show you government exhibit 73. B, just a different photo. You see that photo? Yes. Is that the same coordinates? Correct. Red dot indicating the GPS coordinates? Yes. Are those fair and accurate representations of the GPS coordinates you took? Yes. Finally, Government Exhibit 73C is in Charlie. You see that photo? Yes. And the red dot is attributed to the GPS coordinates that you took? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate representation? Yes. Move to admit 73A, B, and C, Your Honor. <coughs> I just need clarification, Your Honor. I'm looking at the state's exhibit list, and 73 doesn't seem to match what um, is being presented. So I'm just confused what they are. the photos on your screen? Yes. And did you mark up these photos yourself? I plot them. I did plot them. Okay. And it was based off of what, sir? The, my, what we use is CalTopo. What I use is CalTopo. It's a mapping uh, application which allows us to uh, mark and look up uh, GPS coordinates. How did you, on that date, you had to start with something accurate to to make it marked up. I just don't understand. How did you get the coordinates at that date? So when I relieved uh, Sergeant Rodriguez, uh, I stood next to the body with my application, which is, has, is, uh, has a GPS on it. There's a button where I press and it gives me my exact location. Then I'm able to mark that location into, there's layers, maps, depends on how I have it, and it's get, it gets recorded. So I, so that's how. And is this a, a, a coordinates that are plus minus have room for a little bit of error, or is it precision exact? I mean, if you it, took one step to the left, would it still say the same coordinate? No. Okay, it would be a different coordinate. Yes. Okay, then I have no objection, Sean. Is it a 73 to A, B, and C? Is it 
I'm just going to publish, permission to publish just 73 A as an alpha. A 73 A as an alpha, you recognize that photo, right? Yes. That's one of the ones we're talking about, right? Yes. That red dot reflects what? Repents where the, where I marked the location. The GPS location the of? The GPS location of the body. That you were there for, yes. right? I'm going to show you what's been, assuming it's been marked as Exhibit 35 for the government. Just, um, just us, the publication. <coughs> I'm going to show you some photographs of the evening of, okay? All right, I'm going to show you, I'm going to label this. 35A. 35A is an alpha. You recognize that photograph? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate representation of what you saw the night of? Yes. Is that the victim's body? Yes. I'm going to show you, I'm going to mark this 35B. He is a boy. Another photograph. Recognize that? Yes. Fair and accurate? Yes. Uh -huh. I'll show you what's been marked as say exhibit C is in Charlie. Is that upside down or upside down? Is this a fair and accurate representation? Yes. Uh -huh. I'll show you what's been marked. 35D. Is that fair and accurate representation? Yes. And you were on scene, right? Correct. And you washed over the victim's body for what seemed approximately four hours, right? From 724 to 130? Oh, more than that. More than that. Six hours. Somewhere on. Alright. I'm going to show you the mark the exhibit 35E is an echo. Do you see that photo? Yes. Fair and accurate? Yes. I'm going to show you the mark as government exhibit 35F as in Frank. Recognize that photo? Yes. Fair and accurate? Yes. Government Exhibit 35G is in giraffe. Recognize that photo? Yes. Fair and accurate? Yes. <coughs> I'll show you Government Exhibit 35H as in house. Fair. Did you recognize that photo? Yes. Fair and accurate? Yes. i 
I'll show you Government Exhibit 35 I is an indigo. I, you recognize that photo? Yes. Fair and accurate? Yes. Just a few more. I'll show you Government Exhibit 35J as in Jenga. You recognize that photo? Yes. Fair and accurate? Yes. I'll show you Government Exhibit 35K. You recognize that photo? Yes. Fair and accurate? Yes. I'm going to show you Government Exhibit 35L as in Lima. Recognize that photo? Yes. Fair and accurate? Yes. My last one for you. I'm going to show you Government Exhibit 35M as in Mike. Recognize that photo? Yes. Fair and accurate? Yes. We're moved to admit government's 35A through M into evidence. No objections, Your Honor. 35A through M are admitted. Permission to publish, Your Honor? All right, this is 35A as in Apple. What's that picture of? <coughs> that is a picture of the um, decedent, the body. Do you, do you have any directionality here? Do you know what direction you're facing? The body is facing? Well, the body was facing towards the south. Okay, and so to the right is, what's to the right, do you know? You were there for six hours. What's south, to the, right? the right will be west, left. Well, if I'm facing to the body, the right is going to be east, the left is going to be, correction, the right is going to be west, the body is going to be east, right to the east. But he's facing kind of south. East. Right. This could be quite easier. Where is the Kelly residence in relationship to this body? The Kelly residence from the body was, well, the body from the Kelly residence, backyard of the Kelly residence was somewhere southeast. Well, look at the photo. If I look at the photo, where is the house? Towards, forward, a little bit north of it to the west. Kind of. Can we just, is it to the right, left, up, or down? Bodies, the houses should be forward, a little bit forward on the feet and to the right. To the right. Huh. All right. I'm not going to say you're directionally challenged, but that's. <laughs> I will show you exhibit 35B as in boy. Is that another photograph <coughs> yes. of the victim's body? Yes. And we're seeing the legs, yeah. right? And we see the torso to the left? Yes. And we see the, the boots and the pants, right? Yes. Thirty-five C is in Charlie. <coughs> that photo, what's that photograph of? The upper torso of the uh, decedent man who was put his backpack. And in that, what color? Camel. No, what color shirt is that? Uh, it was kind of bluish greenish type color. And the color of the pants? Uh, khaki. And what color of the backpack? It was a camouflage. And where's that backpack on him? Where is it on? Where is it on his body? It's on his shoulders, like a strap on his shoulder. Would it be fair? Is it over his head too? Yes. Thirty-five D is in David. Another photograph of the body, right? Yes. That shows from a different angle. Yes. Thirty-five E is an echo. Was that a photo of? Mm -hmm. The same. Oh, body. Different angle, right? Different angle. But we see something different in the towards the bottom left, right? What's 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 on his shirt? What's some dark stains? What are the? Do you know what the dark stains are? Blood. I'm going to show you exhibit thirty-five F is in Frank. <coughs> Another photograph, a different angle, right? Correct. And what? And the backpack is to the right. Correct. And that's you already testified over his shoulder, over his head. Yes.
35G, it's in giraffe. Another photograph, right? Yes, on the feet. How, how tall is that grass, by the way? Probably a couple of feet. A couple of feet, right? You're from Arizona, right? Yes. From the area here? Yes. That grass is common in southern Arizona? Yes. If someone were to crouch down and hide, it would be easy to hide in that kind of grass? Yes. If you're looking for something in that kind of grass, would it be easy to miss something? Okay. 35H. <coughs> What's that photograph of? Of the blood stain. Close up, right? Yes. And we have, just so we orient ourselves, we see the backpack to the right. Right? Yes. There's a strap of some sort. You can draw on your monitor, too. There's a strap. Hold on. I'm highlighting this strap right here. You see that? Yes. Do you know if you had like a, a, also a fanny pack? Yes. All right, is, would you know? Do you have any recollection if that's a strap of the fanny pack? Mm -hmm. I don't. Okay. And then we've got some kind of antenna, something over here. Okay. See that? Do you recall what that is? Yes, a radio. Radio. Thirty-five I is an indigo, and that's a close-up shot of the shoulder area of the victim's body, right? Yes. You see where that backpack is at? Yes. Thirty-five J, as in Jenga. That's a close-up photo of the radio, right? Right. Thirty-five K, the kangaroo. That photo close-up of the left side of the victim's body, lower, lower area. Right. And the 35 L is in Lima. It's a close up of his right leg. Yes. And finally, we have 35 M is in Mike. It's a close up of the left leg. Perfect. So, the questions I have here. Questions that we Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> do you get addressed by deputy, Felix, or how do we address you? No oh, matter. You don't Corporal. want me to say, hey, you, do you? No. Deputy Corporal. Deputy Corporal? You're Corporal? Yeah. All right. So how long at this time have you been, since you went to the academy? How long? Oh, yes, sir. I went to 2005. 2005. September 2005, that's when. And when you were in the academy, you are trained to handle different situations, including crime scenes, is that right? Correct. Okay. And when you got to the scene, you were not the first officer guarding the body, were you? No. And who was guarding it first, to your knowledge? Sergeant Omar Rodriguez. Now, when you go to a crime scene, what's your job as an officer guarding that particular location? What would your job be? To not allow anybody, any unauthorized people to go over there and touch, tamper with the body itself. So are you allowed to touch and tamper? No. So when you say touch it or whatever, you're basically making sure no one touches, moves, alters, does anything until the right people um, um, get to the scene. Is that right? All right. And who, what type of right people would that be? Crime investigators. Crime investigators. Who were your crime investigators? Well, the people that got there was, uh, at the time, Joseph Bunting, Jorge Inza, Alonso Flores, and uh, Mario Barba. What's the last one? Mario Barba. Okay, but usually 
the detective, lead detective, is not necessarily the one that's working the crime scene. Who is designated to work the actual crime scene? To your knowledge, on this date, January, uh, it was January 30th going into the 31st. Who took photographs? Yeah, I'm on to Flores. Flores? Who analyzed the, uh, the body and positioning and drew maps and all that stuff? Who was doing that? I believe Alonso, uh, Alonso Flores and Mario Baca over there. So, it would be proper procedures to wait for the crime scene investigators to come to the body before anything is done in that location. Is that correct? Correct. If, uh, who is normally designated in training procedures to um, respond to a body and protect it? Who would be the first person to do that? The first officer on scene. First officer? Police officer? Okay. And is it proper procedures to also have some kind of log of who enters the location and leaves the location of a crime scene? Yes. Are you aware of that being done? I believe so. Okay. Do you know who did it? I'm not 100% sure, but I think it was Deputy Lopez. Now, when you get there, the crime scene's very dark, correct? Yes. And there were a lot of photos shown to you, and I'd like to go back over them, but my understanding is, will you agree that your job is to make sure no one else enters until the right authority comes into the scene, and that would be crime scene officers, correct? Yes. Okay. So... Your buddy can't go up there. Someone that was patrolling with you shouldn't be up there. You're protecting that body in that location, correct? Yes. What's the reason? Target to keep the body target. Keep it what? Yeah, but to keep the body integrity, make sure there's nobody contaminating anything. Like that. Okay. So the integrity, so that <laughs> proper information will filter down the pathway of the investigation, correct? Yes. The proper information will go to the medical examiner, correct? Correct. The proper uh, information would get to the detective <coughs> to review, correct? Correct. And ultimately, that proper information would be reflected in this courtroom, correct? Correct. <coughs> okay. And so, if something is altered, that that uh, basically attacks the integrity of the crime scene, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. And you didn't do that, did you? No. And you don't know if it was done prior to you getting there, do you? No. number 35, okay? okay? And I'm going to start with A. <clears throat> Do you notice some straps? What might be the fanny pack or to the, uh, well, it's off to the side by the right hip. Do, yeah. do you notice that? Yes. Did you notice when you were guarding the body there was a backpack and a fanny pack? Initially it didn't. Pardon? Initially it didn't. What does that mean? When I got there, I just saw the body. I didn't see the, the, uh, the fanny pack until it was removed. Until it was removed? Well, it was once CAD got there and started checking the body. So these photos are after removed? These are 
first. These photos are before. Before it was removed. But do you see this thing running along the side of the body here? Yes. Okay. Oh, something went through. Um, where it's marked with a red dot. <laughs> okay. I erased it. Actually. No, it's fine. So that appears to be a fanny pack, correct? Okay. Would you agree? Could be. Okay. And a fanny pack is usually worn on your body. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Typically, yes. Um, and there is some photos that you may or may not be aware of, but fanny packs are often now worn on the front of your chest. It's the common, youthful way of wearing a fanny pack. Have you seen that out there before? I have. Okay. And does that appear that this fanny pack is being worn at this moment? No. Did you take it off the body? No. Do you know who took it off the body? No. So, if a person's traveling in this terrain, he's probably wearing whatever he has on him. His fanny pack, his backpack, would you agree? If you're hiking? Typically. Yes. And so you have no idea why this fanny pack is to the side? No. You don't know, have any idea if someone tried to rob them of the contents of this fanny pack, do you? No. So you have no idea how this might have got pulled from the front chest of, of this um, the person that has been photographed? No. <clears throat> I'm going to show you B again or B, again, reflecting the fanny pack on there, seems to be along his side of his body, correct? Correct. Now, you didn't take these photos, in all fairness, correct? No. But you did see this, this person laying there? Yes. As reflected by the photos? Yes. And I'm going to show you what is now C, I believe, 35C. There is a, a backpack sitting over this gentleman's head. Is that correct? Correct. Right. Did you notice that the backpack was unzipped? No. You never noticed it? No. Okay. Let me show you um, some photos that are not in the state's photos, may be similar or some may be duplicative, but I'm going to show you Defense Exhibit <coughs> SS and I'm going to let the state see it. And I'm going to tender it to the witness. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Now, does this look like the same person in the photos that you are seeing that have already been published? Yes. So this accurately depicts also just a different angle of zoom in of the deceased? Yes. Okay. And you want to look at the rest you can. Have you had a chance to review these photos? Yes. That defense is marked as SS. Do these photos also accurately depict the body as you saw it? Yes. <laughs> A 
and you did say you were out there until the body actually was taken to the morgue? Yes. Okay. So you did watch or observe crime scene take some of these photos? Yes. Your Honor, at this time I'd like to enter in uh, Defense Exhibit SS. Look, wait, No objection. Exhibit SS is admitted. Permission to publish. Yeah. We're going to have to get past this. I apologize that we have to look a little more closer to a face. But if this is important, and this is uh, Exhibit A, and I'm more directing more in all respect. I'm going to cover up the face just a little bit. Okay. I'm, I'm reflecting here more the, the, uh, the backpack. Okay? So being sensitive to a partial face being shown. Um, I covered up the face a little bit. But do you notice <coughs> that this backpack is unzipped? Yes. Okay. Do you notice? It appears to be unbuckled. Yes. Okay. You didn't unzip it, did you? No. You didn't raise it above his head, did you? No. You didn't see any other officers, did it? Because you were guarding on your watch, right? Yes, ma'am. And you never heard about anyone else doing it up to this point, right? No. Are you, while you were there, were you still waiting for someone to start taking these photos? Yes. Okay, so they came after you took over and guarded? And again, the person that was guarding at first was whom? Uh, Sergeant Omar Rodriguez. I'm going to show you photo B, defense exhibit, again, still on SS. We're still looking at the backpack, or the fanny pack, off to the side, right? Now, I'm going to show you, I believe we're on C. I'm going to point to the board up here. You see the backpack? Yes. Is the head positioned a little bit underneath that backpack at this time? And we're going to go back to the state's exhibit for comparison. Or, actually this is mine. No. <coughs> state's 35. Just to compare it real quick. Just a little bit different angle, correct? Yes. And nestled in the tall grass, you can kind of start to see a, a head in there, correct? Yes. And that backpack is literally on top of them. Yeah. All right. Did you notice this backpack also had a waist buckle? No. You didn't get to see that. Okay. So we got an open backpack above his head. And we don't know why it's like that, correct? Correct. And I'm going to show you the next photo in, in SS. And we're now at D. <coughs> Once again, 
we've got a different angle, but we got the backpack reflected over his head because you could clearly see the, the bottom half of the subject and his back clearly away from the backpack, correct? Correct. Not in a normal position, would you agree? No. <clears throat> Let me go to, I believe this will be E. Now at some point, we got a, a cut strap, correct? Looks like it. Right. right. And that is the backpack still, right? It's camouflaged? Yes. Or is this the fanny pack? Can you tell? I can't tell. It looks like a bug. Okay. We're on F. Let's go through this. Okay. You can see the belt line of the of the deceased person. <coughs> it seems to have a belt on or something. Is that right? Looks like it. G. Again, you got a better view of the backpack literally on top of this head, right? Yes. And possibly some straps that are not buckled up, correct? Correct. Most backpacks have a loop at the top, would you agree? <coughs> and you can grab your backpack with it, a little loop. So. Did you observe um, crime scene um, once they did get there? Did you kind of hang out there with them? I stayed there. Okay. Did you observe them rummaging through his personal effects? I believe they were taking photographs of the, of the interior of the backup. So let me show you hmm, the last one in here of this grouping. which I believe is K. It appears that crime scene, and I'm sure you're going to say this is not you, right? You're not doing this. Yes, I was in there. Someone from crime scene has gloves on, correct? Correct. Oops, wrong one. And do you know why they wear gloves? Well, to, I guess for one, to not contaminate the, the item. And obviously for safety reasons also. Okay, so it's kind of a, you agree it's a protection for both. One, to keep the, the evidence from being contaminated, right? Right. In case there's DNA, fingerprints, or whatever that <coughs> might be needed later, right? Right. But also, we are possibly dealing with blood, and that's also to protect the officer, right? Correct. All right, now this is the fanny pack. Would you agree? Yes. 
Do you have any idea why it's half empty? No. Okay, you were unsure of um, that whether he was wearing a buckle or a belt, and I'm going to go back to states 35, and you can clearly see there is a leather belt, correct? Correct. When you said you saw a blood-stained <coughs> item, that would be a, just a good logical guess, correct? Correct. You're not a, a chemist in any ways, correct? Correct. You didn't see a lot of blood around the body, <coughs> did you? No, not that I could recall. Yes. And you said, did someone bring out some lighting around the body? Yes. Are you aware of how big of an area was created around the body to make it a crime scene? No. So you don't know how far you can let someone come in or out? You're guarding the body. Yes. Only the body? Only or the body. what about the location around the body? I was instructed the body. Pardon? I was only instructed the body. So anyone that walked around, as long as they didn't touch the body, was, was okay? Well, I mean, as far as you were concerned, on your orders. Orders were the body. Okay. So my question was, if I came three feet away from the body, that was okay. You just didn't want them to touch the body. Not necessarily. You let them come three feet around the body no. to look. No. Well, how far out did you keep people from coming around the body? That was my question. The only people that got there were, were the body were evidence. Were our, sorry, the uh, crime scene investigators. Were you aware that there were dogs all around the body? I know ETF got there. So you didn't see the homeowner's dogs at all? No. You would admit, though, if you were the first officer at the scene, which you were not on this day, but if you were, based on your training, and a body was discovered, you would first look to see if the person needed medical care? Yes. And if they didn't, you would have protected the body and waited for crime scene? Can you repeat that? And if the person was appeared to be deceased, did not need any medical care, would you then just stand there and protect the body <coughs> until backup and crime scene got there? Correct. That is what your training is, correct? Correct. So you wouldn't personally touch the body? No. I'll pass the witness. Read right now. Let's talk about first, well, always I start off with recency. Last question pertained to um, who is around the body or who you allowed to be around the body. Remember those? Questions? Yes. Um, this, is this an urban area or a very rural area? A rural? Huh? A rural area? No one's around, right? Yes. There's no one mulling around the area? Correct. The only people there are you and then CID comes? Yes. So there's no one to guard off from contaminating the area, is there? Correct. Let me ask you, um, were, you weren't there when the body was first discovered, were you? No. And you were not involved with the processing, right? No. So there's two bookends here. You're not familiar with what happened with the officers on scene when they got there. For example, Sergeant Rodriguez. 
and you didn't partake in the processing of the scene. Your job was to stand guard and be a sentinel. Right. Would you have any knowledge if the backpack was cut to check for life signs? No. Would you have any knowledge that the backpack was open for processing? No. Would you have any knowledge, I mean, there were some questions about this fanny pack. You, let me just go back general, you don't, you don't, you're not aware of everyone's proclivity of how to wear a fanny pack, are you? Or, you're not aware if the fanny pack was attached to the backpack, are you? No. Instead of being around him, it was attached to the backpack, you're not aware of that, are you? No. And you wouldn't have comment or opinion about what may or may not be in a backpack or a fanny pack, do you? No. And you didn't take these photos, did you? No. Some of these, these, some of these photos were, you don't know if they were before or after, do you? Correct. I asked you to identify if they were fair and accurate representations of what you recall, right? Correct. And you can't tell on which book in, before or after, do you? No. That's for someone else to do, right? Yes. That's all the questions I have here. All right, thank you, sir. You can step down. I'm going to ask the judge, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. Hold on, sir. I forgot. Any questions for the witness? We do have a question. Counsel. from one of the jurors is in relation to the first photograph, first picture of the body, what direction is the house? I think we, the lawyers think they're referring to Exhibit 35A. I'm going to show you what's been marked as Government Exhibit 35A is an apple. Do you recall that photograph? Yes. Um, so uh, is that the photograph, juror number 10, that you are yes. referring to? Yes. And you want to know what direction is the house? Yes. All right, very well. Do you know can you answer that? The body is facing in the south direction, so the body. So if you're looking at, like I'm looking at, first view. The house is to the. It's going to be to the right. Okay, thank you. I'm just saying. Sorry, here's the question. All right, very well. Give a question to the clerk. And uh, any other questions for this witness? No. Seeing none. Thank you, sir. You can step down. Thank you. Council back members. Recess for lunch. It's quarter to twelve. Please back, be back in the jury room at one thirty. Trial will recommence at one thirty. We're in recess for lunch.